<laughs> we begin today with the race to fill Florida's one open Senate seat left open when Frank Artiles resigned over what some perceived as a racist sexist rant in front of his colleagues. Artiles was a Republican who represented State Senate District 40 in Southwest Miami-Dade. It is a swing district and both parties are working hard to win it. The district is split in voter registration fairly evenly among Republicans and Democrats. It's heavily Hispanic. The last person to hold the seat was a Republican. We begin with the candidates in the Republican primary in District 40. Alex Diaz de la Portilla is a member, has been a member of both the State House and Senate. He is a businessman and political consultant. Former State Representative Jose Felix Diaz resigned his House seat to run for the Senate. He is an attorney. And Lorenzo Palomares is an attorney in Miami. He made an unsuccessful bid for Congress last year and makes a bid for the state Senate now. Thank you. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for being Thank here. You. Great to have us. you in. Obviously, you're not standing behind lecterns, so it's not a formal, uh, you know, Oxford-style debate. But let's begin with a brief question for each of you. And Mr. De La Portilla, let me begin. In about 30 seconds, why are you the best candidate in the primary and why should you be the next senator from District 40? Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. I'll tell you, I think I bring experience. I was in Tallahassee for many years. I was Senate Majority Leader. I was a Senate President Pro Temp. And I think Tallahassee and the Florida Senate needs some maturity. I think up there we've seen a lot of petulant children in the Florida House of Representatives mess things up. I've been sitting back watching what's happened over the last seven years. I've been out of office in the private sector, and I've seen a lot of problems. Tallahassee's a mess. Tallahassee's broken, so and we need to try experience. to fix it and All right. fix it. All right. Uh, Pepe Diaz, why, why do you think you're the best candidate in the race? Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here. I've uh, been working very hard as a chairman of the Commerce Committee uh, over the last seven years to create jobs and cut taxes, things that our community deserves. I've also worked very hard on protecting our kids um, I have uh, a lot of uh, bills that I've passed to protect kids, Kaylee's Law, Nubia's Law, things that are just the beginning of the conversation. And we spend a lot of time this year working on condo reform, something that I would like to continue in the state Senate. Mr. Paul Morris? Well, I'm the only one who's not a politician and a uh, career politician, I may add. And uh, I want to serve. I already have my career. And uh, I want to go and I'm going to go there and serve the people of District 40. Uh, not like Mr. Uh, Diaz de la Portilla, who gave me the canker law, and he who made me pay for it. So, you know, that's that's the problem we have. And I agree with Mr. De la Portilla that, that it is broken, and we need to clean it, and we need to new, bring new blood to this district. And he, he mentioned the canker law. For the record, the state court system uh, made us pay for it. So they said that those people whose property was taken away, they needed to be reimbursed for it. So there's over 100,000 people across the state that need to get a check based on what the courts have requested. Duly noted. Uh, before we get into some pretty significant issues, I think what we've heard here from the constituents of Senate District 40 is how negative this campaign has been. Mr. Diaz de la Portilla, you, you are appearing in public in a public forum for the first time. We, we so appreciate that you are. Um, but there has been some real negative press and negative flyers levied your way and you have some accusations of your own. What can you tell your constituents about keeping this office clean and pure and focused on the issues? Well, the gentleman to my right has spent over two million dollars of dirty special interest money attacking me every day on television there have and the been mailboxes. In both, in both uh, th directions. That's not correct. That's not correct, Glenn. There has no PAC is supporting me whatsoever. Not a single PAC is behind me. My, can my campaign is completely self-funded with very few um, contributions. All the PACs, seven of them, are with, uh, are with the gentleman to my right. Over two million dollars attacking me personally. Uh, and, and that's just not, not what we need in Tallahassee. People are tired of this politics of, of personal destruction and attacks and attacks. Offer, say what you have to offer to the people of District 40 and do it and stop attacking. All right, Mr. Diaz, in fact, uh, you've heard the allegation. Have you been behind either PAC money or money directly from your campaign to protect Mr. Diaz de la Portilla? Um, I've been very clear. I have done comparison ads from my PC and from my campaign. Um, they've been based on facts. I have also been attacked. So uh, he knows it himself. It's, he yeah. puts his name on it. Uh, you have attacked, and uh, and uh, it, it, that has not been based on fact. That's the big difference. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get, if we can. I've done it on the record, and I've done it on his record. It's a very bad record, and I put my name on it. As he said, I put uh, my I've name seen, on it. I don't I've hide. Me, I don't hide behind special interest groups. Yeah. I do it like men do it, straight up in your face, and with my name on it. All right. Well, let, let's get to a unflattering story about you that appeared 
in the Miami Herald about some, an incident in Boston, 2012. You were in a hotel room with a woman, not your wife, and you were smoking, uh, and the uh, hotel security tried to get you to stop smoking, according to this report, and you refused to stop smoking. Police were called. They came. They gave you a citation, essentially a ticket, for trespassing. Charge was later dropped. Uh, but the police said you were belligerent uh, in your dealings with them. Now, strictly speaking, this does not have much to do with State Senate District 40, but it speaks to your character, your temperament, your judgment, uh, and it's not a very pretty picture. What, what about this incident? Well, first of all, I couldn't be with my wife because I don't have a wife. So uh, I, I think that was a mistake that happened five years ago. It's totally irrelevant to this campaign. I don't think it speaks to my judgment or to my temperament. I was a Senate Majority Leader. I was a Senate President Pro Tem. I was in the Florida Senate, leader in the Florida Senate for 10 years. I've proven my temperament and my judgment over all those years serving the public as a public servant. But that was a mistake. I dealt with it. There were no charges. It was for smoking in a hotel room, for Christ's sake. It's not even an important issue. There are much more important issues in this campaign we have to deal with. They talk about things that, again, once again, the nasty, negative campaign from this gentleman well, somebody, to my right. Somebody planted not, that story. Of course story somebody with the planted hair. it. And, and Pepe Diaz, uh, Mr. diaz Lopatia has said it was you or your operatives who planted that story. Did it was you? not. I mean, I've, I've, I've told them directly. I've spoken to many people and told them that I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I've done the polling. His record speaks for itself. He raised taxes. People care more about that than the personal issues. You, you did in 2009 well, when you were there. That's so, not true. That's an outright lie. I, I, I haven't never attacked anybody. Taxes. Nobody has attacked me. I'm the only one with a clean record here. And that's a fact. So, uh, well, he did uh, mention that I raised taxes, and that's what he's saying yeah. that over. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm sorry. He, he's okay. saying over and over again that's an outright lie. I never well, voted to raise taxes. In fact, 16 years in Tallahassee, I cut taxes by $20.3 well, billion. $20.3 billion. Documented according to the Florida well, Office of Demographic I, I, I Research. Think, I think, so the I lies think. have to stop, the negativity has to stop. We have to run a clean campaign based on ideas. The, the thing is not what happened in the past, but what will happen in the future. And what we need now is new leadership in Tallahassee, not the same old, same old issues. So let's go over, uh, one of the biggest issues right now is education. There is a huge outcry over House Bill 7, 7069 is what they call it. Uh, you as a state rep, former state rep, Mr. Diaz, you voted for that. I know in one of our forums, yes. Mr. Palomar, and, you and said you'd be against it. I would like to hear Mr. Diaz de la Portilla. Uh, it is a bill by, the outcry is that it, diverts funding to charter schools it was from terrible. our public schools. It was so what terrible. would you have done? It was Maybe. terrible. It was a 276 page bill dropped on the desk of all the legislators two days before the session ended. You would have with voted 35, no. absolutely, 35 yeah. provisions. They promised, they promised us transparency. This, they op they promised us open government. They promised us to tell us the truth. And what they did was they did it in the shadows. The public's business should be done in the public. Like, well, like. This and, is the and what same. happened, let me finish one second, Lawrence. And what happened in that bill is basically took all the money away from our public schools and gave it to charter schools. Okay. And all these, a lot of these representatives. Hundred forty million to charter schools. I'm and Richard Corcoran and others, by the way, yeah. have business interests in uh, charter schools. Hey, P.D. Diaz, you voted for this bill, including that provision. Yeah, there were there were fifty schools. something provisions in the bill. It included thirty million dollars for the Gardner scholarships. Yeah for kids with disabilities. It included mandatory recess, which the studies have shown is good for kids. Right. It included additional monies for bonuses for teachers, which is good for teachers. So there were good elements. For Miami-Dade County, there were $450 million allocated for infrastructure. Only 20 million of that went to charter schools. So it was a de minimis amount. I could not vote against a bill that helped kids with disabilities. Well, the problem is, uh, uh, Michael, that this bill is gonna suffer the same consequence that the Jeb Bush, uh, voucher program uh, happens. You cannot take public money and give it to private people. That just doesn't work in our well, former government. Well, charter schools are semi-public institutions. No. They're chartered by the local school no. district. Um, but uh, some of them are not for profit. That's the problem. That's the problem. No. Some of them are now for profit charter schools. And, and, and it's going to suffer, my, my, I believe, constitutionally, it will suffer the same consequence as the voucher that Jeb Bush put out that was giving out voucher money to people who didn't like charter schools. But that House Bill 7069, clearly the best example this session of why Tallahassee's broken. No transparency, yeah. no accountability. Maybe it, it was not a transparent process from my vantage it, it, it was a bill that came in at the last point. The only alternative was to vote against it, but there were good things, unlike 
in 2004 when the majority leader at that time supported a bill that took away money from our public schools, the DCD mitigation, another which we're still suffering from now. In the interest of time, let's get to another topic, mm -hmm. a huge topic, transportation issues. Real quickly, we'd like to hear what is the premier concern traffic to, congestion. especially in your district, traffic congestion, your idea. Yeah, traffic that. is terrible. We live in the heart of uh, traffic land in Miami. We're uh, everything west of the Turnpike and everything west of the Palmetto. Uh, the tolls are out of control. There's new tolls popping up all the time. I have a record of fighting against tolls, of working on legislation that holds MDX accountable and make sure that they're not uh, raising tolls and putting tolls every five feet. We actually passed that bill this year. So there, there's a lot of work to be done. I think the future of traffic is upon us. I think that our county was planned at a time, I'm an urban planning lawyer, was planned at a time when, when there was one car per house and there were 30,000 people living in Miami, we need to come together as a community, yeah. fill in the urban landscape so more yeah. people live Al where they were. Alex, in about 30 seconds, what would you do as one state senator to try to mitigate this terrible traffic congestion? Well, I think the biggest problem, let's talk about tolls for a second very quickly. Uh, tolls have gone up 222% since, since Mr. Diaz came into office. 222 percent. But he's not a member of the MDA. No, he's not, but he could have passed legislation out of the last minute like he did last session. He could have done it from day one. So, so look, we have to address the toll issue. The traffic issue is more of a county issue that has to be addressed. We have to have better coordination between the county and the state. The state. And, and, and the cities also, frankly, have to put in their share too. And, but we really have to focus on what we do collectively as a, as a state body, as a, as a county body to get find a solution to this problem. Right. Well, we, right. we need to bring Metro Rail back up on Kendall Driver 104 all the way out to West Kendall. Uh, and we also need to bring 836, the expansion past uh, the uh, west side of the turnpike in order for Kendall yeah. to be on landlocked. That's yeah. the problem we have right now in Kendall. Beyond the urban boundary. Yes, well, exactly. that's issue controversial too. Well, gentlemen, not nearly enough time, but we're very glad you came in Thank this you. morning. We at least touched the surface, I think, of some important issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much, Michael. Up next, the Democratic candidates.